Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about the best champions to main on patch 13.10. In this series we have a list of 3 champions per role compiled by our elite team of challenger players and analysts that are strong and not too contested. This makes them great to pick up since they're likely to get in your hands and they're not likely to be nerfed anytime soon. If you like what you see in this video, make sure you check out ProGuides.com. We're working on guides like this for every champion, adding onto our already huge list of over 500 master courses put together by top level pros and streamers. A pro account only costs $7.99 a month, and since we now bill monthly, you can cancel anytime you want. That's already a pretty good deal, but to sweeten it even more, we decided that we'll be doing RP giveaways for subs as well. Every patch, we're offering up a nice bag of 11,525 RP. Entering takes just three quick, easy steps. Click the link in the description, sign up for the pro membership, and comment your pro guide's username down in the comment section below. You will not find a better deal anywhere, so what are you waiting for? Go pro now! Alright, let's get on with the guide. We'll start things down the top lane with Olaf. If you like to take a slow approach to the top lane, farming it out and scaling, look elsewhere. Olaf is going to be going full aggro as early as level 1. Literally. If your opponent disrespects you and walks up, and you can land an axe, you can almost always just ghost and run them down. You'll at least get a good chunk of damage out of them, if not a summoner or even a whole kill out of it. Due to his super snowball nature, an early lead on Olaf can easily turn you into taking over the game. Since you're immune to CC, when you're strong enough, you can very easily take on ganks and just fight 1v2 over running away. One little tip for Olaf is to always run Ghost. Bring Ignite with it if you really want early kill pressure, or Flash if you want maximum mobility and sticking power in team fights. The second top laner that we have for you is Dr. Mundo. As is typical of Juggernauts, Mundo is incredibly beefy and does a ton of damage, but the one issue some Juggernauts have is being kited. Even when fed, it can be hard to reach backline carries. But just like he says, Mundo goes where he pleases. The movement speed from his ultimate makes it really easy to navigate fights, while its cleave gives tons of sticking power. Once you're on someone, they're not getting away. Team fighting aside, Mundo is also disgusting as a split pusher. Once you're ahead on such a beefy champion, you can really be a massive bully in the side lanes. You'll be naturally itemizing into a lot of health and armor, so you can even go for trades under the enemy's turret risk-free. Lastly for this role, we have Cho'Gath. A lot of tank picks tend to be about farming up early and scaling for teamfights. But Cho is a pretty scrappy guy. He's actually considered a counter against most bruisers because you can just outduel them early. Then just keep them shut down since so you can atomize against them so easily. His lane dominance comes from his ability to always win the War of Attrition. His passive gives a lot of sustain as long as you're last hitting minions, and when you trade, you'll be healing up with Grasp while your Q makes it so hard for your foe to trade back at all. Then post 6, he becomes absolutely deadly. Being able to do such big chunks of true damage means that you can go for an all-in just after one or two smaller trades beforehand. In team fights, you'll definitely be kiteable, but don't just right-click the enemy carries. Wait for an ally to land some CC, or just play around vision and look for Qs. If you hit one, a flash W auto R combo can be enough to delete a squishy carry or support. Taking a look now at some junglers, the first pick that we have for you is Udyr. While nowhere near as popular as it once was, the AD builds are actually doing really well for him. But the AP Bruiserish tank build is the one that's easiest to execute, and fits well into any comp. And that's why we'll be focusing on it the most today. Udyr's clear speed is absolutely insane. His Q, especially when awakened, shreds through beefy single target champions, while his R melts multi-target ones. His fast clear gives you tons of time to either gank or invade the enemy jungle, allowing you to quickly take over the map. In team fights, he does just a bit too much damage for being so tanky. If carries aren't getting peeled, you can easily one combo them in the mid game. His damage does fall off a bit when the game goes super late, but even then, you'll still be a nuisance that the enemy team has to answer. Our second jungler is Mumu. Yeah, I know, 4 out of 6 champs so far are either tanks or super tanky juggernauts. But what can I say? It's almost like champs in those classes are OP and fit well into any team comp. Anyway, everything I said about Udyr pretty much applies here. Amumu technically is a scaling pick, but he has such a fast and healthy clear that you won't feel like a weak early game champion. He even has pretty good ganking power early. It's not the best, but overextended foes are pretty easy pickings if you can land a bandage toss. Once you make it to 5v5s later into the game, the combination of AoE engage, chain CC, and ridiculous damage makes Amumu one of the very best team fighters in the game. And now for our last pick in the jungle, something that may be a bit more controversial, Nico. Nico's win rate in the jungle has been absolutely abysmal since her mini rework, but I don't think the stats quite tell the full story here. A lot of people are just rushing to try her because it's a shiny new thing, and as often the case, that's tanking her win rate by a lot. 
I think even before her 13.10 buffs, she's actually in a decent if not strong spot in the jungle. The extra clear speed buffs coming this patch aren't going to suddenly make her good. It's just a matter of mastering her and learning to abuse her mind games well enough. So give it a bit of time. You're not going to have a great win rate with her at first, but she's definitely worth considering if you like outside the box picks. Alright, now let's move on to the mid lane. Our first pick here is Cassiopeia. There's pretty much never a meta where Cass is bad, since she tends to be super flexible with item builds. Leandris and Demonic Embrace lets you shred through enemy tanks and juggernauts, while Ludens allows you to pop other carries before they can even waddle out of your miasma. But the build that we have recommended is just a standard go-to at the moment, making you super beefy, so you really just feel like a bruiser that just does hyper-carry damage for absolutely no reason at all. If the enemy team is particularly dive-heavy, and you really want to be even safer, you could even throw in a stone plate into the mix somewhere. The next mid laner that we have is Swain, right? Just can't stop making this one mistake. X Champ is doing bad in Y role, so they buff it, and it just ends up being super broken in other roles. In this case, it was support. Swain was such a mediocre support, but is that really the role that Riot should be balancing him around? Uh, either way, they did what they did, and now he's just super broken when played as an actual carry in any lane. His laning phase is super safe, and as always, once you make it to two items, he's just an absolute menace and team fighting god. He's too tanky to burst down, and he does too much damage to just ignore. There's literally no right answer. The one weakness that he has though is being kited, since he loses his ultimate if you can't stay on your foes, but that's why we have Ghost. Unless you really need Exhaust to survive the early levels against an assassin, Ghost will almost always be the answer. For Swain's build, you often see people start going into tank items in the last couple of slots, but you should also bear in mind that the healing on Swain's ultimate scales with AP. So unless you're literally being one shot, it's best to go pretty much AP heavy, like with our build. Our final mid laner is Vex. Her mix of being a burst mage and battle mage makes her super easy to execute. You can carry by one-shotting foes, but also have the tools to be super safe against big threats. This leads to her being a super consistent pick that you can even blind pick since there are no real lane counters or unplayable enemy comps. As with any burst style champion, you should absolutely get magi to start snowballing hard if you're doing well early. If you do, you can either drop Zhonya's or Void Staff from your build, depending on which one you need more. Moving things down to the bot lane, the first carry that we'll be taking a look at is Kogma. With so many items reworked this patch, it's gonna be a bit before we figure out who is all good with what items. But one thing that doesn't take much figuring out is that the new Ginsus is absolutely gonna be broken on Kogma. Kog has always been THE tank shredder. But one issue is that his damage was so hybridized that you don't really build any pen items. It just felt like a waste to commit any full item to pen when only half of your damage benefits from it. But with Ginsu's now getting a split pen added to it, both his W and Blade of the Rune King will be shredding through any beefy frontliners a lot harder as the game goes later and later. Now with all that being said, as we mentioned in the videos in the past, don't be locked into the mindset that you have to go Ginsu's every single game. It's absolutely the best for shredding through tanks, but the Navori build is still a super strong option. The 100% uptime on his W makes it a lot easier to safely stay back in terms of team fights, and it's generally the mythic that you want to go when the enemy team is squishier. The second ADC for this patch is going to be Misfortune. The build that we have here is actually completely untested. It's just a fresh idea that our analyst came up with. It may end up just being better to rush Infinity Edge, like a lot of other ADCs will, but you should definitely at least give this one a try. Also, if the enemy team is pretty tanky, definitely replace Collector with Kraken Slayer. Regardless of how specifically you build her, Misfortune is always good, especially in the lower and middle ranks, because she's such a lane dominant ADC. Love Tap gives her both great pushing power and bursty traits, allowing you to always have Pryo. Her ultimate is also a simple but incredibly strong tool for skirmishes and team fights. Some people will say that MF falls off as the game drags on, but honestly, they just don't really know how to position well, because a good MFR can literally one-shot an entire team. Lastly, as per usual, we have a mage pick bot lane, this time in the form of Heimerdinger. Playing APCs as your bot lane carry of choice makes League pretty autopilot. You just auto-win lane by shoving into your foes and poking them while they try to farm under their turret. Once you're 6, you don't even have to fear enemy jungle ganks. In fact, you should welcome them. As long as you fight on your ulted turret, you can usually turn ganks into fights that swing heavily in your favor. To round out our list, we have our support, starting out with Nami. If you like the supporty feel of enchanters, but prefer a little bit more of a presence in lane like a mage has, the Nami is the pick for you. Her W is a one-button wonder, able to provide both sustain and poke to bully your opponents out of lane. She's always been really reliable as a champion that's both easy to play and has a decent amount of skill expression, so she's easy to pick up and feel rewarding to master. 
With the newly added Echoes of Helia, I think Nami is going to have a big spike in performance in the coming patches. So definitely start abusing her before she catches on and it becomes harder and harder to get your hands on her. Sona is another enchanter that I think is going to do super well with all of these changes, but she's basically the polar opposite of Nami. While Nami wants to trade constantly and shove people out of lane, as Sona, you're just here to survive the laning phase and scale up to team fights. Once you do reach those points in the mid and late game of team fights, Sona comes online and is suddenly worth infinitely more than the enemy support, thanks to the constant buffing to allies and debuffing to enemies. Between Echoes of Helia, the reworked Moonstone, and Shirelia's, it's honestly really hard to decide which is best. Maybe it's more of a situational thing, or maybe it just comes down to preference. Try them all, see what you think, and come back and let us know. Finishing things off, we have Maokai. Ryan has tried time and time again to make Maokai not a support, but he just keeps coming back as a top tier pick. Now we're back to the build where you just roam and look for catches, or some would say branch out to other lanes. <laughs> Never mind. <clears throat> Anyway, it's a bit more interactive than spam a million saplings and bushes style of play, but can you really say that it's more healthy? Once you have Swifties and Dead Man's Plate, no one can outrun you, so if you get a flank on an overextended foe, they're basically guaranteed dead or at least forced to blow a summoner. It's also really nice that Maokai is just so easy to execute. Plenty of champions have seemingly simple kits that are plenty easy to mess up, but Maokai's W is as easy as it gets. So once ahead, it becomes pretty easy to snowball a lead and close the game out. And that about wraps things up for our three champions to main on patch 13.10. Like I was saying earlier, if you liked what you saw and heard here, be sure to come over to ProGuides.com. We have tons of other content and courses by ProSecore JJ, Double Lift, and General Sniper for you to access. And now we're even working on pushing out guides for every champion. All of that for $7.99. And that's not all. If you prefer a more one-on-one -on -one approach, our team of coaches are the best that you'll find anywhere on the market. And with the Pro Guide sub, you'll even get a discounted rate on them. Trust me, the amount of time that you'll save by booking a session with them is so, so worth it. You'll accelerate your climb by months once you apply everything that they have to teach you. And of course, there's that sweet, sweet RP giveaway. Again, the link for the site is down in the description box below. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Do let me know what you think down in the comments below. I can't wait to see you guys next time, but as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.